Hi guys, this is Dodgeful and for today, we're going to ask a question, do cables matter? And we're going to try some interconnects. Do cables matter? Probably the most talked about and argued question in the Dodgeful world. Measurements don't show a difference and yet other people swear by it. You have impressions of being better in base, recessed in mids, more refined highs, better clarity, depending on the cable used. And different materials have different effects, say copper has better base than silver, silver more brighter than the copper, and gold being the median between the two. And you have people saying otherwise. For these science versus magic debates, my stance is that I should at least try it once with the least cost possible. So that's what we'll do in this video. I compared cables from Monoprice, which is super cheap yet so much better than the flimsy RC cables you get free with your TV or AVR. Ugreen, another generic brand similar to the Monoprice. Do it yourself RCAs made with 21 gauge silver plated cables and braided by yours truly. Vantam low caps. A respected cable maker that's used professionally in studios and events. And Zoo Audio Wild for about $100 and XLRs for a little bit more. From the speaker designer, Sean Casey, who used to design cables for Ray Kimball and Kimber Cables, so he should know what he's talking about. And we're all gonna try them Audiofool style. Coming to this review, I'm somewhat of a 50-50 believer in cables. Part of me doesn't believe in cables because whenever I change cables in my listening room or my home theater system, I never notice anything different. Although admittedly, I never took the time to find out, unlike in this video. But part of me wants to believe in cables because of two specific instances. The first one was when I compared a monster cable with the Zoo Audio Wild cable in my friend's house and he did a blind test with me. And we got 10 out of 10 because the Zoo Audio Wild was just so much clearer than the Monster Cable. The other instance was during the Topping BFTS review. And when I did when I do reviews, I make sure to use the same cables. So the, mo the Modi Motivate was just so much superior to the DFTS using Monoprice cables. But as per suggestion of the guy I borrowed it from, I used silver plated cables on the Topping DFTS and it became a bit more competitive. So for the first test, we're gonna connect it, connect the RCAs to the Yggdrasil. The Yggdrasil has two RCA outs connected to the Freya, so we can just easily switch the source in the Freya with the Monoprice and Ugreen interconnects. As you would expect, there were no differences at all. If I had to really nitpick, I might say there was a tiny difference in volume, but not really enough to detract from the sound. Next, I connected the Zoo Audio Wild and compared it to the Monoprice. The Monoprice was the exact cable I used that degraded the sound of the topping D50S, so I was kind of hoping to find some differences, but I found none. Again, there were very minute differences in volume, with the Wild actually being a little bit lower, but not really affecting the sound quality enough for me to have any preference. Next, we try out using cables from the preamp to the ager using longer 3 meter cables in my case. I used a 3 meter Monoprice, a 3 meter Ugreen, a 4 meter DIY lightly braided because it's a lot of hard work silver plated cables, and a Van Damme silver plated extra thick extra juicy cable. And there, I used two tests for this. The first one was to simply turn off the app and then quickly swap the cables. For the other test, I put the blue sound node in mono output and then put different cables on the left and right channel and then listen closely at the speakers on the left and then the right. And then I swapped cables. With the Monoprice versus the Ugreen, again, there were no differences. And when I switched to the DIY, I was really disappointed that it was the same as well. It took me hours to braid something that long, but I guess it was still fun. But still, I was really, really hoping that it would sound a lot, lot better. Finally, 
Van Damme is used in many pro studios and has a very thick shielding so it should work better than my DIY. But it didn't, it was just the same, but at least it's not terribly expensive. Finally, I figured I might as well check if there were differences in XLR cables as I had three brands on hand. Again, the Monoprice, Ugreen, and Zoo Audio. The testing methodology was the same as with the single edit tests, except that I was working with monoblocks. And again, there was no instant magic clarity, no better, more defined bass, no clearer, more resolving mids, and they all just sounded the same. So based on my testing in my room with my gear, cables don't matter in sound quality. But of course, you can always go for that more expensive cable if you're just after the looks, similar to maybe how a Royal Oak Offshore looks so much better than a Seiko 5, but still tell the same time. Just don't have any expectations and who knows, maybe you're hearing that magic. What about my previous experience where I said that cables did matter? Well, I still believe in them because I wasn't drunk or high at the time and I'm 100% sure about them. So perhaps it's a case-to-case -case basis, but in my use case today, I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure that cables didn't matter. So for future reviews, I'd still use the same cables just to keep it consistent and to make sure they're not a factor. But I'm no longer wanting those thousand dollar nor those cables because I've been audio bold. Cables do matter for looks. As always, try it out and hear for yourself. But if you ask me, I'd say don't bother. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, just write it down below. See you in the next video.